In this video, I'm going to show you how to really work the knee and help sustain its durability and mobility. First, I'm going to take you through some external and internal rota tibial rotations here, disassociating uh, the knee from the hip and just really trying to uh, go in and out with that foot here. And the shin should be the only thing that should be moving here along with this rotation. So after that, we'll perform knee controlled articular rotations. Knee, foot goes in, out, down, in, up, out, down, and then reverse it out and up, in and down, out, up, in and down. And these are controlled articular rotations of the knee. These you can perform as many times as you can in a day if you're really trying to repair that knee. Uh, this is going to be low intensity, uh, high volume throughout the day. Uh, it's going to be important to take care of that same sided ankle. Obviously all of your joints are important, but when you're performing knee mobility exercises, you really want to uh, focus in on the entire leg. So here we have internal tibial rotation, pals and rails. I'm going to hold this position passively for about a minute. And then we're going to turn the passive stretch into an active stretch. What we're going to do is hold this, breathe and hold. You can have your back against the wall. Our foot and our knee are in tibial internal rotation. So if you have issues on the outside of that knee, uh, you're going to do this very softly. So you don't want to feel any pain. And as you're holding this, you're breathing inhale for four, exhale for eight. And we're going to hold for about a minute. And then after a minute, we're going to start trying to get out of this position. So we're going to try to go into external tibial rotation, but our hand is going to stop it. So it's going to create an isometric uh, contraction in that end range. And we're going to build intensity from 0% all the way to 100% intensity without any pain. And once we hit that 100% intensity threshold, what we'll do after that is begin to go deeper into internal rotation and we'll remove the block, which is the hand, and we'll allow the foot to actively go inward. So here we're going into progressive angular isometric load, pressing, 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 pushing the hand into the foot, foot into the hand, going for about 30 seconds, all the way from zero to 100% of my safest and greatest effort. And then once I hit 30 seconds, I remove the block and I begin to internally rotate without using the block and trying to go deeper into that stretch. Remember, without any pain. So back away if there's any pain. And if you can do it without the pain, just keep pressing as hard as you can 100% here, staying at that 100% intensity after that PALS contraction. After that, you'll go back to your passive stretch. You'll breathe, maybe rinse out the ankle. You could probably do some knee cars as well. And what we'll do is go through one more round. And what I'm gonna do here is passively hold it and then begin to actively press the hand into the foot, foot into the hand for about 10 seconds. And then I'm gonna go back into my regressive angle, removing the block and doing a slight PALS contraction and a slight RALS contraction to kind of finish this internal rotation of the tibia off. And so using active, ang um, progressive angular isometric load and regressive angular isometric load in the end range of tibial internal rotation is the main goal here. And so if you have outside uh, knee issues, then this is going to be the stretch for you. Now, if you have inside knee issues or medial knee issues, and it's very tender when you stretch here, uh, like I've had in the past, you're going to want to just passively hold, inhale for four, exhale for eight in this position. So now we're in external tibial rotation. We're going to hold this with our hand and notice the hand placements, making sure that the hand is on the upper outer foot and that your knee is bent as much as it will go. If you need to use back support, that's perfectly fine. So we'll hold this position for about a minute passively, and then once we hit a minute, we'll begin to try to go out of the stretch. So we'll go from external tibial rotation and we'll try to go in. But since our hand is there, that's the block or the barrier, and the barrier, the block, is gonna create that isometric uh, contraction. So 
in that progressive angle, we're trying to go out of it. And what we're gonna do is press the hand into the foot, foot into the hand, just like our other stretch, and go from zero to 100%. And here we go from 10 to 20, 20 to 30, 30 to 40, 40 to 50, building up intensity all the way to 100%. You'll do that for about 30 seconds, and then once you hit 30 seconds, you'll remove the barrier, and you go deeper into external rotation without the barrier, and you'll hold that for about 20 seconds. So your PALS contraction is about 30 seconds, your RALS contraction is about 20 seconds, and then you go back to your passive stretch after this. So holding it in your RALS contraction, holding it, holding it, and holding it, and then relaxing into your passive stretch and then you'll recycle this so you'll do the same thing after your rouse contraction so once you're done with your rouse go to your passive move it around a little bit and then we'll do another 10 second pals and 10 second rouse so here my hamstring is starting to cramp or no no uh, my tensor fascia lata, the outside of my upper hip area is really starting to cramp here because you're using all of the muscles in your body when you do these efforts. So when I do my progressive angular isometric load or my regressive angular isometric load, I utilize all bioflow in my body or all the available muscles I can to recruit the intensity into this area. And the more intensity I use in my whole body, the more it goes to that specific area. So... Again here, 10 second pals, and then 10 second rails, removing the block or the barrier, going deeper into the stretch, and that would be external tibial uh, rotation pals and rails. Now again, if you got knee issues, um, then you're gonna wanna take it very slow, you never go into pain, and really building up to this is important, and if you can do this now, that's really good for your knees. Your knees are probably really healthy. Going back to that internal and external tibial rotation, Gonna rinse it out with some knee cars. So definitely felt like I had more range and extension even though I was just working on tibial rotation. Uh, I felt definitely a little bit looser. Uh, you're gonna notice that with any type of stretching or any type of stimulus, you're always gonna feel a little bit better. So that's just uh, very temporary. But over time, if you continue these patterns and you perform these exercises with the knee specifically, you're going to definitely gain a lot of strength in and around that knee if you have issues. Here we have knee extension pals and rails in the half kneeling position. Notice that I'm bowing out my lower back, my chest is forward, I'm pressing the dowels into the ground, my knee slightly bent, and the front foot is about dorsiflex. Hold this for about one full minute passively, and once we hit a minute of passive effort, inhaling for four, exhaling for eight, We'll begin by driving the heel into the ground and driving the dowels into the ground. So at the same time, we'll build up from 0% all the way to 100. And then here we have our rails contraction. And we're pulling up and away from the ground, getting away from the ground, going all the way up as high as we'll go, and setting it back down. So that would be an example of pals and rails for your hamstring. So that would be a quote-unquote hamstring stretch or how to build mobility in the hamstring if you're if you're lacking there, if you're lacking space in the extension. Now for knee flexion, you can do these side lying around your stomach. I've noticed that more people can do it side lying than on their stomach. You're gonna hold this position passively, inhale four, exhale eight. Breathe and relax. Uh, there shouldn't be any pain. Let go if there's any pain, use a strap if you need to. And you're gonna hold and breathe, inhale four, exhale eight for about a minute. And then what you'll do is start trying to get out of this stretch. So start trying to extend the knee and you'll start building that isometric contraction. And you'll go from zero to 100% intensity at your safest and greatest efforts. So that might be 30% for you. It might be 20% for somebody else and it might be somebody else's 80 to 100% max exertion. So just take it your time. You go into your PALS contraction here going from zero to 100%, so 10% to 20, 20 to 30, all the way to 40 to 50, 50 to 60, 60 to 70, and then 70 to 100% of your safest and greatest effort, holding here for about 10 seconds, using as max contraction as you safestly can, 
breathe and hold here, and then let go, bend the knee, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it. Trying to go deeper into flexion, deeper into flexion, trying to get the heel to the glute, heel to the glute, squeeze, 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 keep squeezing, keep squeezing, and that's your rails contraction uh, and knee flexion, okay? So you can repeat that on your stomach, so this would be an example. Also, you can have the foot plantar flex or dorsiflexed in this position. Again, you're trying to build up intensity, and then after you build up to 100%, you go into your rails effort by bringing the heel deeper uh, to the glute and then ex extending it and just relaxing it after. Okay, so that will be, that was knee extension and flexion, demonstration pals and rails, very simple. Uh, and then after that, obviously I'd like to move around the patella 360 degrees, my thumbs. Really important that uh, the patella moves and it doesn't uh, get stuck in any places. So patella health is really important as well. And that's gonna help uh, you understand your knee better, all these exercises. So if you have any questions, just let me know. You can check out my YouTube or my IGTV. I got tons of examples, other knee exercises and other mobility exercises for your entire body. If you like this, uh, then you know, share it with somebody who needs uh, some knee mobility drills, uh, who's got some knee issues. Thanks a lot.